1967, just two months after he finished helicopter training, First Lieutenant Larry Taylor was sent to Vietnam to fly some of the first Cobra attack helicopters the U.S. Army ever used in combat. At that time, there were only nine Cobras in the entire 1st Division. His mission, respond quickly whenever soldiers were in trouble. By God, when the, when the horn went off, you had two minutes to get that ship off the ground. I don't care if you flew it naked. Larry got that call more than 1,600 times during his year in Vietnam, but it was one night in June 1968, during some of the deadliest, darkest times of the Tet Offensive, that Larry Taylor shined his brightest. Nearly 100 North Vietnamese troops were closing in on four American reconnaissance soldiers known as Wildcat II, and they were running out of ammunition. Dave Hill was one of them. Totally surrounded. is an area about the size of a football field. Larry Taylor and his wingman swooped in, firing more than 150 rockets and 16,000 bullets into the total darkness, but the Americans were still pinned down. Also running low on ammunition and fuel, Larry's commander came over the radio, ordering him back to base to resupply. Mike Holden saw it all unfolding. He told him, I'm a senior officer in this, you're not. Get off my f frequency. <laughs> I'm going in and these four men are going to die. Turned it off and went down. Larry turned off that radio frequency and turned on his landing lights, drawing the enemy fire so the Americans could make a run for it telling the men where to run and assuring them, I'll find you. What was going through your mind? Before I started the approach in, I thought this is a good idea. And when I got about halfway through it, I thought, what the hell am I doing? What did your co-pilot say to you? He said, ah! <laughs> I said, relax. And he says, hell, I'm sitting in front. So they'll shoot me first. But the Cobra could only carry the two pilots and no passengers. Larry said, I'm going to land. You've got 10 seconds to get on. I don't care how you do it. I don't care where you sit. As soon as I landed, they looked like, where's the door? And I said, there's no door. This is a cobra. Get the hell on here. So they, two of them sat on the skid and grabbed a strut. Two of them straddled the rocket pods backwards and flew. So he's on the ground. Uh, he said 10 seconds. We didn't use half of it. I found them landed and within two seconds hell they were they were hanging on and somebody slapped the side of the ship which meant haul ice and uh and we did were you taking fire as you were lifting off and as you were flying uh, yeah was anyone hit me yeah. you were hit your you your ship ship was at least 16 bullets hit the Cobra helicopter, but Larry, his co-pilot, and the four soldiers clinging to the sides were untouched. I couldn't have flown them at night because the air was cold and they would have frozen. They cleared the area and touched down minutes later at a water treatment plant secured by U.S. troops. Did you get in trouble for defying the order? What are you going to do, send me to Vietnam? <laughs> Why did you do that? I knew they were in trouble, and if I hadn't picked them up, they'd be dead. We, we could, they'd be dead. With barely enough fuel to get back to base, Larry was back in the air only moments later. He was just a shadowy uh, uh, part of a helmet. We couldn't even see his face because of, of our position on the other side of the plexiglass. The team thanked him the only way they could. And all four of them lined up out there in front of the ship and turned around and faced me and all of them did that. And I flew away and never saw them again. Until 30 years later at a reunion. That was the first time we could personally thank him uh, after 30 years. And only then find out Larry was never nominated for the Medal of Honor, after his commanding officer and division commander were both killed weeks after the rescue, the paperwork, and Larry's story of heroism became a casualty of the relentless battle tempo. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were shocked. The only team member still alive, Hill took the lead and started a years-long effort to get Larry's Silver Star upgraded to the nation's highest military award. But he was denied twice. He turned to retired General B.B. Bell at the Medal of Honor Heritage Center in Larry's hometown, Chattanooga, Tennessee. 
when he came to me, my first thought was, I've got to let this gentleman down easily because the Army doesn't second guess its chain of command. But then Dave Hill explained that key members of the chain of command were killed and the four men rescued were never even interviewed. And I almost fell out of my chair right in that room back over there. Everybody went back to war the next day and the next day and the next day and soon the war just went marching along. With Bell's help, Dave Hill submitted the Medal of Honor package a third time and it was approved. Last week at the White House, Hill's mission was finally complete, and a grateful nation learned the story of heroism that was almost lost in the brutal fog of war, if not for the persistence of one sergeant. I always said helicopter pilots are my heroes, and Larry's the superhero. These people that you were in the service with, they're closer to you than any family, any brother, your mother, your father, your whatever and you'd die for any of them. What did Larry Taylor give you that night? Give me future life, future generation. Yeah, uh, uh, wife, son, grandson now. And he wasn't the only one. Taylor telling us about a message from one of the other soldiers' family members. She came up and she says, Captain Taylor. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, if you hadn't have done what you did that night, none of these people would exist. So I thought, boy, y'all been busy up there, have you? And uh, but I, that, 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 that kind of hit home. How did that make you feel? Uh, like I wanted to cry, but I can't. Uh, they're not supposed to. <laughs> Never let them see you cry. But at the White House, an emotional moment. We never lost a man, and we never left anybody behind for any reason. And uh, yeah, I think I'm proud of that. I did my job. Courtney Cuby, NBC News, Washington. Nightly Films is sponsored by Pfizer. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.